please join me for a pledge of allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Warren, would you go ahead and read roll call, please? Absolutely. Chairman David Leland. Here. Vice Chair Ross Schellingford. Commissioner June Perrin. Here. Commissioner Philip Marquis. Here. Commissioner Ray Nazareth. Here. Adam Miller, alternate one. Gary Speck, alternate two. Here. Okay, I'd like to get a motion for approval of the minutes from our April 23rd <coughs> local area planning agency meeting. I'll make a motion to approve the local planning and zoning meeting minutes from April 23rd, 2019. I'll second. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Carries. Jennifer, you want to get everybody? Yes, thank you. So my mic is very hot. I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> um, the all testimony tonight for both the planning and zoning meeting and the local planning agency meeting does have to be under oath. So if you're here to speak on an application, if you could just raise your hand for me right now and I'll swear everybody in. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. All right. Thank you. And I don't need ex parte on this first one. Right. Thank you. And, and we are going to deal with the local planning agency meeting agenda first because of the way they go together. So the first item on the agenda is the application number 19-30DA, Southern Boulevard Properties, Pod 3. Uh, is there anyone here to present for that this evening? Bradford? Great, thank you. <clears throat> the applicant is requesting approval of a development agree developer's agreement between the Village of Royal Palm Beach and the developer of Southern Boulevard Properties, Pod 3, in accordance with section 163.3220 through 163.3243 of Florida statutes, the Florida Local Government Development Agreement Act, the developers proposing minimum unit floor areas, which are less than those required by the village code in the RM14 zoning district at section 2686-4H. The subsection allows for a reduction in the minimum floor area requirements if the project developer enters into such agreement in accordance with the act. This slide shows um, some of the differences between what our code requires and what the applicant is proposing. Um, that the first column is shows the number of bedrooms per unit type. And so the proposed sizes are going to be 795 and 816, where 1,000 is required for a difference of 205 and 184. For the two bedrooms, the unit sizes are being proposed as 1,093, where 1,200 is required. And also the average building type, or the building square footages, needs to average 1,200 square feet. And as you see here, these certain building types have a different <coughs> average square foot <clears throat> than what is required by our code. The applicant contends that the proposed development consists of 318 multifamily units within 13 separate buildings and a plentiful community feature such as a pool, clubhouse, fitness center, vegetable garden, outdoor dining areas, play field, picnic area, tot lot, dog park, and volleyball court, as well as numerous walking trails for future residents to enjoy. Um, in order to achieve the desired amount of amenities and spacing for proposed development, a reduction to the size of several of the multifamily units is being requested. The reduction in size of the units is needed to address demand within the current housing market as families and individuals seek to maximize the relationship with their local communities and outdoor experiences rather than desire to live um, in housing that, exceed, that is excessive um, in space and impervious land area. <clears throat> Staff is recommending denial of this application. Um, however, we have recently um, approved a developer's agreement at phase one north, which is the multifamily development that is currently being built. Um, and this slide here shows the differences that they had with our code. Um, 
And then also within the Enclave, a developer's agreement was approved <clears throat> by, let me back up. The phase one north was approved by this board by a, um, a vote of four to zero. And it was also approved by village council. Uh, this development, the unit sizes will actually be larger than what was approved as part of the developer's agreement for phase one north and also the enclave. But staff, we, we just don't have that latitude to take those things into consideration. We evaluate it strictly by our code and therefore we're recommending denial of this application. Discussion? Commissioner? I think uh, the app list, if the applicant could uh, give some remarks and then yes. we'll turn to the public comment and then if okay. that's okay, thank you. I'll be fine. <clears throat> The only, uh, the only comment we'll make is that these Can you units. Tell your name for the record, please? Uh, Brian Tuttle. Um, oh. Yeah, but the only uh, um, comment we'll make is that these units are actually a hair bigger than the one that were unanimously approved in uh, phase one for the related group. And, um, you know, the changing trends of, of rental apartments is that people don't want to, they put much, much more money into the. Um, uh, common area stuff. If you go out to the related site, you'll see a rec center that's 10,000 square feet and a resort style pool with bocce courts and all this activities. So the idea is to get the residents out of the, the apartments and into the community centers. And that's why the smaller units are what are being done. It also helps keep the price down. Just for your trivia, uh, related started renting about three weeks ago. And so far they've had uh, 65 or 68 move-ins and they've actually rented the, the, the even though the one bedrooms are the uh, smallest number they have, it's the highest percentage of units they're renting right now. So the market likes the smaller units is what I'm getting at. Thank you. Questions? Yes, do we have any comments from the public? Okay, now we'll move on to the commissioners. Um, I'd just like to say that um, I really don't like small apartments because I think they're kind of boxing people in. I do like the fact that you are, you know, giving all these other uh, amenities that are so nice and things like that, you know, the garden vegetable and out the dining area. But being that life is how it is nowadays, that's the kind of trend that's running. I guess I have to say that it's okay to put everybody in a sardine can if necessary, you know? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I have no comments other than that. Mr. Fine. Thank you. Jim? Bless you. Right. I have uh, Bradford. I have this question for you. The staff, you said, denied this application, and you also stated that it's larger than the, the north side approval. That's correct. So can you tell me why, other than that, that the staff denied because it sounds like the market dictates what the public wants right. in the free enterprise system and I want to know why this application was denied well the way that we evaluate variances from our code it's a it's a very strict evaluation criteria what's the hardship yes and the hardship is uh, based on granting a variance in a sense, or Correct. they can come back and ask for right. the variance? We, we, we didn't see as staff mm -hmm. um, a, within their evaluation hardship. What we saw was market conditions, which this board and our village council can take into consideration. Right. Staff, the village code does not give staff that latitude. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Right. And uh, I have a question also for the person that the applicant, Brian. Brian. Right, Brian? Yes, sir. Brian, uh, I like the idea that the market, you said it likes smaller units. Can you please expand on that? Well, the, um, all I can tell you is, is what we experience. I can't explain it. Okay. You, you understand? Right. But what we're experiencing is, is that, um, that people want the, the, um, the um, how do I want to say, the, the interaction of the clubhouses, mm -hmm and the rec centers and you know if you if you and i encourage each of you to go out to the related um apartment site because it's 
Related, which is a very large national home builder, they will tell you that's the, the nicest apartments they've ever built. And if you tour it, you will believe it. But one of the things they have, they have this huge 10,000 square foot or 9,000 square foot rec center. Okay. It's got a um, media room. They got a, they got a 12 foot TV for all the people to come down and watch uh, football games and sporting events. And then they've got these outdoor cookouts and they've got the, the foot, the, um, the sports things. And they got, they have a putting green, but they made the putting green flat and where they could put the holes in so the little kids can come out and play soccer on it. Mm -hmm. So they have all these little things and, and the market just seems to be going that, and we've had this discussion with staff is, is that these are really kind of the industry standards for a one bedroom. A Royal Palm just happens to have a very, very, very large square footage for a one bedroom. A 1,000 square foot one bedroom in, in apartment sizes is considered very, very large. But in anywhere else in Palm Beach, Broward, or Dade, they don't have that standard. And I have another question for you. Uh, we talk about affordable housing, and it sounds like you're providing that for us in our community. Um, I don't want to mislead you on that. Okay. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm just asking. That's a question. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we're, we only do market rate stuff. And, and, okay. And because as, as I understand it, uh, the, the, this village has done numerous uh, studies and says they have sufficient affordable housing right now in the village is and I don't want to speak out of turn. But. Okay. Thank you. That's all the questions I have. <clears throat> Anything further? <clears throat> so we have an application before us. <clears throat> Are we going to uh, propose that we accept this? Is someone going to give me a proposal to accept it in a second? I like or are we going to deny it? No. I think that we have to move forward with this as sitting as a council member that sat on previous board on here regarding phase one <clears throat> north and enclave. That it's, it's a proposal we have to move forward with. I'd like to make a, a motion to approve application number 19-30 as is. Second. Uh, yeah. Right. Okay. Right. You second? Yes. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Right Motion carries four to one. Okay. <clears throat> and that'll ad adjourn our local area planning agency meeting. We will move on to our planning and zoning meeting. Okay. Need a motion to approve the minutes from the April 23rd meeting. I'll make a motion that it's approved as read. Second? I second it. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries 5-0. <clears throat> First application we have is number 18-106 SPAAR Toyota. I'm assuming someone's here to speak on their behalf tonight. Yes. They are, and uh, Bradford will go first. This is a quasi-judicial hearing, so do the commissioners have any ex parte disclosures that they need to make? <clears throat> None. Okay, thank you. Great, thank you. Um, the applicant is seeking architectural approval for wall signage at an existing Toyota dealership located within the United Auto Mall, um, located at 9205 Southern Boulevard. The signs will provide advertising and wayfinding for the dealership. Um, the advertising content of the signs are generally consistent with the trademarks. The applicant has provided color um, renderings and elevation showing the signs and locations of the sign. And those are shown here on this slide. Staff is recommending approval of this. These signs probably look very similar to what you saw at the last meeting. The dynamic there was is they had a sign variance approval for two signs um, at a certain square footage. Now, after we looked into this a little bit more, the problem at the last meeting was is that the two signs that they were proposing to take the place of those two signs that got the variance were larger, but they had the variance for the five signs. So what they did was is they said, we will apply that variance to the two signs that are smaller than what they got the variance for. Did you, you notice the dynamic there? 
Yeah. And so now what that creates is it creates a scenario where the sign variance is no longer required and the signs that they're proposing to take the place of the two signs that had the variance at a larger square footage. Now they're a smaller square footage. Now the sign variance is no longer needed. So now what they're doing is, is they're just coming in for architectural approval for those signs. And then these signs will move and catch up with the site plan that's going to village council on this Thursday, the 16th. Well, and I'm glad we were able to withdraw that so that we could get them to work it out with right. you guys because we didn't really have a problem with it. The problem we had was they were asking for a variance to the variance. Right. And uh, so, uh, all right, any other further discussion, commissioners? If we, if, and, uh, yeah, if we could just first, turn to the yeah. applicant okay. and make I'm sure sorry. that they didn't yes. have any comments. Mm -hmm. I just wanted, uh, sorry, for the record, Josh Nichols with Schmidt Nichols, um, agent for the applicant. I just wanted to go. Um, Just go quickly to so variants or not I mean I think one of the major items on here is that we have basically the signage is approved based on one one linear foot is in as one square foot of signage we have 339 linear feet which would be 339 square feet of proposed signage we're proposing 196 so uh, variants or not I mean we're re heavily reducing it based on what's allowed per code um, and again so you can see signs a B and D um, are the existing and new signs, and then C and E are the signs that were part of the previous variance. So as you can see, the previous variance was 29 square feet total, and now we're at 21.82. So in both cases, it's, it's reduced uh, quite a bit. So variance or not, it's a heavy reduction in the signage. So that's all I have. No, we're good with that. Yes, do we have any comments from the public? Well, I'm glad we were be able to accommodate you to be able to withdraw that and get the details worked out so it didn't get bumped any further on you. Um, any comment from our commissioners, June? No, no comment on this. Just glad we were able to work it out after our last meeting. Thank you. No comment from me. I have a comment. Josh, I wanted to thank you for going back to corporate in Chicago and working this out because it sounded like you worked with us in our village. I want to thank you for that. Okay, no other further comments. Can I get a, a motion to approve? Application number 18-106, SPAAR. I'll make a motion to approve 18-106 as read. Second? No, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Next application we have is number 19-003 AAR, Bradford. Great, thank you. And this is uh, quasi-judicial, so does anyone have any ex parte disclosures that they need to make? No. no. All right, thank you. <clears throat> um, the applicant is proposing to install a new monument sign and wall signage um, for an inn currently being constructed located at 1921 Southern Boulevard. I'm sure we've all passed that. Um, the monument sign will be illuminated double face um, aluminum construction painted satin white with black lettering with a cypress green base. The monument sign will have the required five feet landscaping around it. The wall sign will be LED face lit channel letters. Face to, uh, the face be white acrylic with black perforated vinyl overlay, black trim and white returns and would be a total of 19 or 13.99 square feet and staff is recommending approval of this application i'll turn the floor back over to you chairman thank you okay applicant have any presentation or like to make any comments to stand up well, i don't i don't really have a comment sir if you could just tell us your name for the record please I'm talking. Oh, yeah, thank I'm you. Sorry. And you may want to turn the mic on. I'm not sure if it is. There's green, should be a green light. Okay. Am I on? There you go. Mm -hmm. mm. You're live. Tech. <laughs> uh, no, I I have really no comments other than you know we've went through a lot of uh, processes to get to this point and just hoping to get approved. 
What was your name? Sorry. Um, I'm sorry. That's My name okay. is Tim Luzader with Fair and Science. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Discussion? June? No, 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 everything is fine. No questions, no concerns. Going down the line. Gentlemen? No question. No, no comment for me. Uh, I have a comment. I've, every time I drove by Southern, I'd see that you're still there and the, it was progressing, Pioneer Inn. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to say that it's really, it looks good. <laughs> it's, it, it's been a long process with, um, between the, the owners and the GC. And of course, you know, we're, you know, the sub, but to get to this point, it's, it's, it's been a challenge, right. you know, to get everybody involved, to, to make sure that everybody agrees that this is what we want. And it's, it's been a challenge, but we've, we've achieved it. And as we've said many times on this commission, we like to see improvement. Improvement yeah. is important. Aesthetic value. Any other comments? All right, then I need a motion to approve. I make the motion we approve. The application? Yep. Second? I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 5 0. Thank you. Hey, yeah. <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> Next is our application number 19-012 AAR, Bradford. Great, thank you. <laughs> this is quasi-judicial. Do the commissioners have any ex parte disclosures that they need to make? No. All right, thank you. Um, the applicant is requesting architectural approval to modify the existing monument sign uh, for the Huntington Woods community, community located at the intersection of Parkwood Drive and Royal Palm Beach Boulevard. Um, the modifications will be at the north and south sides of Royal Palm Beach Boulevard entrance into the community. The modifications will, um, modifications will be at the north and south sides of Royal Palm Beach Boulevard entrance into the community. I stated that. The improvements will consist of cladding of the existing monument and landscape wall with stone veneer, a decorative cap to landscape walls, fabricate and install illuminated reverse channel letters onto monument sign. Um, and staff is recommending approval of this application. As you can see, they will have the five-foot landscaping um, around this sign. I'll turn the floor back over to you, Chairman. Thank you. Okay, do we have any comments from the public or anyone involved with this project? Please. Give us your name. My name is Eric Johnson. I'm with Bennett Lighting Maintenance. Uh, comments regarding so it's an older community uh, basically they have existing monument walls that uh, face the entry what they are proposing to do is equivalent size to what is existing they're just trying to create a beautified look for the community uh, it's going to be halo lit so it's going to have a very subtle lighting element to it and uh, I think it's going to be a beautiful improvement my name is Eric Johnson with Bennett Lighting Maintenance Bennett Lighting any other comment? Comment from you, June? <coughs> um, the lighting that's going to be around this, is this LED lighting or what type of lighting? So the channel letters are reverse channel letters, so they're going to be backlit. They're going to cast a very subtle lighting back onto the stone veneer. Okay, okay. And is there going to be any lighting ab above it or underneath of it or anything like that, or is it just the channel letter? Just the channel lettering. Okay, thank you very much. That's it. Thank you. Commissioner Speck? Any comment? No comment. Great. Uh, I, it, it, it'd be a definite improvement. I go by there a lot at night, and you, know, you can't really read it now the way it is. So. No, it, it definitely definitely would be a step forward there. and be a good improvement. Great. Eric, I want to say that uh, I drove by there, and that reverse lighting really brings out uh, the business. And uh, one last question, when you, when you drive by there, what is the range of people that you capture by that lighting? Just out of curiosity. The number, number of persons? Yeah, yeah. Or the distance that it would be viewable The distance, at? yeah. Just roughly. Well, the, the number obviously would be dependent on the flow of traffic, which I'm not 
privy with that number, but uh, the dis viewing distance is often measured by the height of the letter. Mm -hmm. And so I believe, and I'm just going from memory, I don't have a, a diagram yeah, in front just, of me, yeah. that it's probably going to have about 100 foot visibility. Nice. I like the work that you did, though. That was my comment. Well, thank you. Okay. Yeah, it is a sedate look. Yeah, right. We're always looking for improvement in the, in our area here. So, all right. Well, it sounds like we're all in agreement of it. Thank you. Can I get a motion to approve that application 19-12 AAR? I'll make a motion to approve application 19-012. Second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Carries 5-0. Next application is 18-115 SPM, and I won't bypass you again. Thank you. This is Pioneer Estates. Uh, this is quasi-judicial. If any of the commissioners have ex parte disclosures, if you could let me know now. All right, thank you. Great, <clears throat> thank you. Um, the label on this slide is incorrect. It's not Nautical Lakes, it's Pioneer Estates. I apologize for that. Um, the applicant is seeking a site plan and architectural approval to amend the approved landscape plan for Pioneer Estates townhouses. The applicant is requesting to remove material in certain areas, add landscape in certain areas, and swap species of materials in certain areas. Village staff has reviewed the proposed site plan and architectural approval to change the previously approved landscape plan and determined that the proposed the proposal meets the requirements of village code and the original quality of the project will not be diminished. The relevant review criteria for this application um, is stated here on this slide. The applicant contends that the reasoning for these changes is due to ensuring long-term sust sustainability, swapping of plant material due to wet and poor drained soils, overcrowded and overshaded conditions, utilize larger growing shrubs, and replace the weak and weak-rooted yellow tababuya trees. The applicant has provided a justification statement that outlines these changes and that was included within your packet. Um, the staff is recommending approval to be forwarded to Village Council regarding this application. And this, this application here is not um, very, or very dissimilar to the one that we just heard regarding Nautical Lakes where this applicant is actually at the stage one identifying these issues where nautical lakes identified these issues at stage 10 15 um, further down the road so that's that's really why in the gist of this application is to reevaluate the soil conditions as as these plants were going in and then swap out the species that were um, a little bit more appropriate for those soil conditions and the shading conditions and the sunlight conditions and i'll turn the floor back over to you is there anyone here that would like to present? Thank you. Thank you. Hi, for the record, Christy Lee with Kotler and Hearing, and we are the agent land planner and landscape architect of record for the Pioneer States project, and I'm here on behalf of Pioneer States by Luxcom. Don Hearing could not be here tonight, but I do also have George Missimer from our office here if we have any questions. So the project is located about less than 0.3 miles east of State Road 7 and just south of Pioneer Road. The project was originally approved via Resolution 1549 on April 21st, 2016 for a 93 unit townhouse development. The zoning is RT8. We submitted a major site plan modification to amend the last approved landscape plans. And as the site was cleared and construction began and continued, it became noticeable that the soil conditions and shade conditions would create significant dieback over time with the current approved plant materials. So this proposed landscape plan ensures greater long-term sustainability for the project. We also included minor enhancements to the foundation plantings um, to better support the architectural design of the project. And the proposed plan meets all village code requirements and provides a much better, higher quality project. Thank you. I tell you, my hat goes off to you to be proactive like this because we don't see a lot of that. It, uh, it's good. It's real good. Okay. Any other further comments or? Uh, comments from the public? Public, right. I would like to comment. Please. My first 
step forward, tell us who you are. Yeah. Uh, my name is Carla Miner. I am a resident at Grays and Townhomes. So, and again, so please help me understand how this is managed. So, I guess I wanted clarity on what is being done about the drainage issue because all of my neighbors, our backyards are mud pit. There's a lot of stagnant water, a um, lot of you know, flooding, and we're really unhappy. I can't even step in my backyard. It's horrible. And of course, that brings mosquitoes and a lot of gnats that are coming into our homes. So is this including addressing the drainage issue in the neighborhood? Uh, this is just landscaping, but oh. um, the planning and zoning director, we can get you in contact with the village engineer. He, he's kind of in charge of monitoring the drainage mm -hmm. on the site, making sure everything's being constructed in accordance with the approved engineering plans. Okay. So we will definitely get that number for you before you leave tonight, and then feel free to call him, and, and, he, and somebody from the engineering department will... Um, you know, they'll, they'll help address that for you and try to okay. figure out what's going on. Yeah, because they told us that was being addressed, so I assume that's what this meeting and what was being covered, so I was hoping to learn about that um, and just, making complaints. Just to step in here, um, the village engineer is Chris Marsh. Um, Lauren, if you, if you have internet access, if you can look that up, that way she, when she leaves here, we'll be able to get that to her. Please. Yeah, but that is not what we're talking about tonight. Okay, but we. Yeah, that, that's why I asked because I didn't yeah, hear it, and, and so that's really concerning. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely, we'll get you the name and number you need. Okay. Who who am I going to get that from? I'm going to get it from you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. No further comments. Discussion, commissioners. I'd like to welcome you, young lady. Oh. Your first. Uh, yes, first time homeowner, so that's why I'm, yes. <laughs> no, well, congratulations. You're always welcome to come to the planning zoning meetings and also to the village meetings also. Absolutely. It's a very knowledgeable phrase oh, oh, that you'd like sorry. to go through, so welcome to the meeting. Okay? Thank you. Thank I you. hope your issues will be addressed with your time. And I thank you guys for addressing this now, and hopefully you'll put it in the proper landscaping that will address all these issues moving forward so you won't have any additional issues with this later on. Okay? And we'd like to see that beautiful and keep our residents happy. That's very important. Yes. Measures? Discussion? No. Ray? I'd like to ask Carla a question. Now, you're the neighbor, and you have other neighbors in, in the Yeah, he's, he's also, wave your hand, he's also a resident. We live, we just bought townhomes, yeah. Right, and, and I, I hope that you get satisfaction from talking so to Chris too. Marsh, because we, we don't want to do anything to make this complicated for you because I understand mosquitoes and other brings in other pests or whatever, and you're concerned that being a neighbor, you're going to have all. No, that. I live there. I live in. Fact, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. You live live right there. Yeah, so yeah. please let us know how it turns out for you, okay? I, I will. And I appreciate you coming to yeah. us and and letting us know that, okay? Yeah. Thank you. Can I get a motion to approve application number 18-115 SPM? Make a motion to approve, to approve application 18-115. Second. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Okay. Now we've got a few applications coming up here that are referencing the same property. Um, application number 18-0007 LW. Bradford, will you kind of navigate us through this thing? I will. Yeah, please. And, and since they are involving the same area, um, I'll just get the ex parte over with for all of these. Yes, so please. for uh, items number five through eight on your agenda, if anyone has any ex parte <clears throat> disclosures, if you could let me know. No. All right, thank you. You gotta have the parking variance before you get the site plan approved. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, the applicant is seeking a landscape waiver pursuant to section 151531B1 to allow for a reduction in the width of the required 25 foot perimeter landscape buffer. 
Eric Boulevard along with Tuttle Boulevard will allow for through traffic. So Eric Boulevard and Lowe's Road, they, those two names are interchangeable. And we, we knew this road as Lowe's Road from the very beginning, then it became Eric Boulevard. So when you're, when I, when I may go back and forth between those two names. And that, that is, if you can see my cursor, this portion here, okay? This is a proposed new road that is located generally at the intersection of State Road 7 and Southern Boulevard. The applicant is intending to taper in a certain area of the perimeter buffer width along the south side of the proposed Erica Boulevard from 25 feet down to zero feet for an area of approximately 233 linear feet. And it's shown here on this slide, just to give you a point of um, orientation. This here is Lowe's shopping center, the, 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 the store. And this is the road that continues to State Road 7. And here's the pinch point that I'm gonna to refer to. The reason for the landscape waiver request is due to Erica Boulevard being constrained in a certain area due to an existing Lake Worth drainage district canal easement on, on the south side of the road. The landscaping for these roadways meet all other village code requirements. Uh, and again, this slide shows um, the area in which the buffer will be affected. Staff is recommending approval of this application. And just to give you guys again, to reiterate the point of reference where this roadway, because it will be part of the larger development, the pod three application. Um, this is Lowe's Road. This is Home Depot. This is Lowe's. This is Lowe's Road. This is Home Depot. The intent of this road is to connect to State Road 7 at the, uh, the main entrance of Home Depot. So that now Lowe's Road, I mean Lowe's and Home Depot will now have a designated and a a, a, a light, a, an actual traffic light to help traffic flow yeah. in that area. As you know, now it's typically people are exiting this very south entrance and exit of Home Depot, which the middle ingress egress point was designed to be the main entrance. And this now will line up with that main entrance at Home Depot. And and thank you, Bradford, because I, for one, admit that I was very confused about where that light was going right. to be. And Bradford explained it all to me, and it made so much better sense now that I've seen what they're about to do. Not knowing that they were going to create a new road, you would assume that that light would be at the north ingress, egress point of, at, at Lowe's, right? At, very close to the light. Yes. Yep. And, and, and um, our attorney, um, Jennifer, just mentioned to... Um, we, we discussed this landscape waiver whenever we did the comprehensive plan amendment. Um, that, con that, that discussion took place because we wanted full disclosure to those that were making decisions, this board and also village council, that if you're gonna approve this comprehensive plan amendment, this will be accompanying that application when you go for site plan to landscape waiver. So we were hoping that you were already contemplating this landscape waiver when you were approving the landscape, I mean, the, the comprehensive plan right. amendment, which, which did pass. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'll turn the floor back over to you and answer any questions. Chairman, thank you. Like I said, I, I would open it up for discussion with our commissioners, but after the explanation that I got from Bradford on what's going to happen, I think this actually will create less congestion uh, for this area because as, as when we spoke, people are using that intersection of Southern to make U-turns uh, because they're trying to come back and with an open access intersection there, it's going to clean up a lot of that because you now can get direct access to go across the street to Home Depot without clogging up our intersections, which is really what we wanted to accomplish when we talked about this back when. Right. And not only that, the traffic study that the TPSO letter relied upon also included a left out of Home Depot so that you then can travel southbound <laughs> on State Road 7 rather than having to go to this intersection or take your life in your own hands, cross four <laughs> lanes, and then try to do go at the, you know, one of the U-turns that doesn't have the dedicated light, so. Mm -hmm. I have no further. 
Yes. Does the applicant have any comments or? I assume you're going to be up here a few times. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's doing that. Um, Alessandria Palmer here with uh, Urban Design Kill Day Studios representing the applicant TLH. I just wanted to pull up one slide that might be a little bit helpful <clears throat> here in this discussion. Um, I know the site plan's the next item, but I'll just. Okay, can you all see that? Mm -hmm. Weaver slide. So again, this just sort of gives you a big picture as to where the location is that we're talking about. And I thought this slide was helpful because it shows the parcel lines and a little bit more clarity showing where that Lake Worth drainage district parcel is located and why we have that gap and um, the need for the waiver in order to um, not put landscape in that right of way and the taper to that point. And then this slide just shows you, again, more of a graphical representation of how that taper comes into play. Um, I think Bradford already mentioned, but it's about 120 feet within the Erica Boulevard uh, right of way, and then 233 feet within the Lake Worth Drainage District, actual the land that they own. So. Um, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them, but that's just a little bit more. Uh, Was visual. there consideration given to the homeowners on the other side um, for, which I think I know the answer to that, but I want to make sure that we're talking the same language here with the other commissioners. Uh, sure. I'm, I'm assuming you're talking to the residents to the south in Victoria Groves. Yes. yes. I'm glad you asked that question. We met with them as recently as May 8th last week, and uh, we've been in contact with them as recently as this morning. <laughs> um, we've been working with Victoria Groves, the, the, the HOA board, for almost, gosh, over two years now. And um, they've known about the landscape waiver for quite a long time, the board members did. However, um, after the mailer went out, some of the residents had asked about it again, who may have not been on the same page two years ago when it was originally discussed. So what we did was we have actually been um, coordinating with them to add some landscape to the three homes that are going to be adjacent to this area of the landscape waiver. Um, we have sent them a proposal to do that landscape work. That's not part of this approval that you're going to be looking at tonight, but it is a private agreement that we are working on with them. Um, they asked if they should be here this evening, and I said unless they have an objection or any additional concerns that they didn't need to to make a, a public comment. So I'm assuming by them not being here that they were happy with our proposal. <laughs> And can you, you elaborate a little bit on that just for us? As far as the landscape, we right. have not done a site survey yet. This all just came up in the last week that they wanted this additional landscape. So we have to send somebody out there, see what's there in the buffer today, see what the approved landscape buffer plans for Victoria Groves um, show and make sure we're consistent with that. So we don't have an actual plan proposed yet, but um, once we do, we'll But what you're trying to do is get a buffer on their side direct behind their homes they have an existing buffer but my understanding is that over the years it's sort of been thinning out diminishing things have died um, sometimes residents take things out when they're not supposed to do things of that nature so we've offered to sort of plump that up replace anything that's supposed to be there and add a little bit more to create a bit of a, a better screening for them in that location okay. I have no further questions as, as long as the new the residents in those three homes are going to be happy with what you do, that's fine. As long as it's you know a proper buffer that we're not going to have any issues with later on. And I leave that in your hands. Thank you. <laughs> but I, 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 I went too fast. We do, do we have anybody from the public who had any comments on it? You just said they're not here, so I'm assuming they didn't. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sure. Any comments? No comments on this. Okay. Uh -huh. I have a question, Tanya, for you. Uh, now, you said Victoria Groves is, and, and we know we've heard their comments the last meeting, um, and, and you say they're okay with it. I mean, I'm not assuming because they didn't come here tonight whether they're okay or not. In other words, when you submit the approval for the, the trade-off, you know, you're putting landscaping in those three houses, and they approved, you said? 
So, well, those first, specific houses. So, first of all, the landscape would actually go into the common buffer area. The common buffer. Yeah, okay. not into the actual lots. Um, however, as I mentioned, this all just came up in the last week that this right. was something that they would like to see. So, we haven't come up with any design yet. If there's a modification to the buffer, it would have to be submitted to Bradford's department for approval, um, and that would come at a later time. Because I like the fact that you're working it out with Victoria Groves because I don't want them to feel like they're fighting City Hall, so to speak. You know, you're, you're actually working. So the compromise was that the three houses would get the landscape buffer. Correct. And they're okay with it, though? That's what they voiced to me directly. Um, if you all would feel more comfortable with maybe some written correspondence, from them, we can probably get that. Please, yeah, because we want to make sure that this is not opening up a can of worms down the road. Not a problem. Okay. And, and just so the commissioners know, mm -hmm. the, these homeowners did receive the 300 foot notices. So they, they were notified of this. I think that's what generated the phone calls to right. the HOA board saying what happened. Exactly. Um, those residents have 100% right to come to these meetings and voice any objections. So um, they have the right to come to the council meeting on Thursday night as well. They were notified of both the hearing dates. So if they don't come and they don't make an objection, it, we can't really bind the applicant no, to some absolutely. future unknown. Right. So it, it really is on the, the shoulders of those residents to come and say, you know, they're happy or they're not. If they don't come, mm -hmm. um, there's, there's not much we can do on our end to. But what I like is that they were notified, you know, because I don't want to. They were notified, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. All right. Can I get a motion for application number 18-007-LW? Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to approve as read. Second. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Carries 5-0. Next application, <clears throat> excuse me, is number 18-0113 SPAAR. Bradford? Great, thank you again. <clears throat> the applicant is seeking site plan approval and landscape plan architectural approval for this roadway that we just discussed, which comprises 10 tracts of land totaling approximately 11.2 acres. These tracks consist of several single family homes on large tracks. The applicant has indicated in the justification statement that the goal is to develop the property for roadway purposes to provide secondary ingress and egress point from the area to State Road 7. Additionally, Erica Boulevard along with Tuttle Boulevard will also allow through traffic from Southern Boulevard to State Road 7 by actually even bypassing that intersection there at State Road 7 and Southern. Mm -hmm. um, uh, further, Lulfs Road. Lulfs Road is, so this is the Tuttle Boulevard, which connects with the Erica Boulevard. This is Lulfs Road. Um, Lulfs, Lulfs Road will provide access to Pod 8, which is intended to be um, an approximately 10 acre park <clears throat> that will satisfy in part the off site public recreation requirements for Pod 2. Pod three, this pod that's going to be that's on your agenda tonight, and a future application before this board. Pod four. In reviewing the proposed site plan approval <clears throat> and landscape plan architectural approval of the parcels to the village's general commercial zoning district, staff considered compatibility with adjacent land uses, consistency with the village's comprehensive plan, and conformance with the general commercial. Uh, zoning district development standards as it relates to parcel size, parcel width, setbacks, which really don't apply, but if there was a uh, building, it would have to meet the setbacks of the zoning district. Pervious area, landscape plan, it meets all landscape requirements of village code other than the landscape waiver, which was the prior um, item on this agenda. And staff is recommending approval of this application. And I'll turn the floor back over to you, Councilman. And I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that the applicant has better illustrations of the landscape along the roadway. We just don't have the <clears throat> production department that they probably have in their firm. So I'll turn the floor <coughs> over to you. So again, no pressure. Hope you're prepared. <laughs> Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Alessandria Palmer, again, for the record, Urban Design Kill Day Studios, representing TLH. 
I will try not to repeat too much here. Let's get through some of this. Um, as Bradford did describe, Erica Bull, there's two comp main components to the road, new components, I should say. Some of you are familiar with Tuttle Boulevard, which is the main spine road that you've seen throughout the last Southern Boulevard property approvals. Um, however, the new two new components are Erica Boulevard, which is the east-west uh, through traffic road that's going to connect Southern to State Road 7, and then we have the Lufts component, which is going to provide public access to the park at Pot 8. As you know, the land use and zoning were approved for this parcel, as you had seen. This is the overall site plan for the roadway network within the Village Royale Master Plan, and um, you see those three components, as I had just discussed. Now, this slide you may remember from the rezoning and the land use applications, and I thought it was important to show this again because it does show that connector, uh, what's providing the, the, the trip capture and also the internal uh, network for the master plan, as well as creating um, an out instead of having to go through the Southern Boulevard intersection with uh, overpass and State Road. <coughs> so um, that, that is how the Lowe's Road application and property boundary will will be advantageous for this master plan we had already gone over the landscape waiver so i don't have colored <laughs> landscape however i do have let me get after this. brad were just talking i know up. i was like really come on now. um all right let's see here i do have landscape though if we are interested in seeing that Sure, and I can, for some reason, is that showing up better for you all? Because I can barely see it on this. Um, I apologize. So all the roadways, uh, the Lufts and Erica, as well as Tuttle, which has already been actually permitted, um, will have the same palette, a similar palette at least. The, the main palette will be the Royal Palms. That will be the significant uh, specimen tree, very large, uh, tall gray wood royal palms will will flank all the main roadways of the of the of the community and that includes um east to west on erica boulevard as well as going down luffs and uh eventually and also will be going in shortly i would imagine on tuttle boulevard so um you can see some of that in here and then there's of course going to be your uh, typical required rhythm of understory shrub materials and, um, and ground cover in between the spacing, the 20 foot on center Royal Palms. And that's um, pretty much the same consistent design through all the roadways because we wanted to give it that branded of a look. And that's Eric Boulevard at the intersection of Luffs. Again, I hope I got that. I think that was it. That was it? Yep. Further discussion, Jim? Uh, any comments from the public? Huh? I don't think anyone's here, but we have no, to. No, I thought I thought I asked it, but okay. <laughs> Quick question, Eric Boulevard. How many lanes is that going to be? Erica Boulevard, I believe, is going to be four lanes. Two, I mean, further away. It'll be four lanes. Um, there will be some turning lanes towards the entrance to State Road 7, obviously, where the signal is, but uh, for the most part internal to the community, it will be two and two, so. And since we're on that then, what about Lux and, and Tuttle also? I, honestly, if you know. let's see. I, I can tell you for cool. sure, but let me see here. Um, so Lux, I believe, is, and I don't have the engineering, you know, I do have that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the not primary, the engineer. <laughs> the primary sections are two lanes. Okay. They're two lanes. Okay. And then wherever they join, like the light, they go to either four or six lanes mm -hmm. to allow for turn lanes. Okay. But is Luffs okay. also? Luffs is two lanes. Okay. Yes, two I lanes. promise. I wouldn't mind to that. By the way, I, I hope you guys, this is going to be a cool road. We're lining this road every 30 feet with uh, Royal Palm. The entire way so not only will the median have royals the sides will have royals it's going to be magnificent will that little trolley run down that road we're working on the trolley <laughs> <laughs> but we just agreed to a mass transit stop <laughs> i want the trolley <laughs> good that's okay thank you 
<laughs> you good? Mm -hmm. I'm good. Other questions? <clears throat> yeah, I have one question. Exactly where on Southern is it going to meet? Tuttle, I guess Tuttle Boulevard. Right. I've got a good slide for that one. <clears throat> and it was actually the next slide on the presentation. <laughs> right. But you're talking just a right turn coming out of there? Is it cutting across? The... There's already a light there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've already installed the light there. On the other side of the shop center there? I'll show you. Let me That's in San Lampstein, isn't it? Yeah. No. Yeah, it's 103rd North. No. There's a six lane bridge, which right. allows for mm -hmm. lefts and rights. And right. coming out of 103rd. 103rd, yes. 103rd. <clears throat> okay. I have a question on, on, on uh, State Road 7. If you're traveling north and you've got to turn into here, how many turn lanes are there going to be at that new light? <laughs> Based upon the agreed um, geometry, lane ge or intersection geometry, there will be two left turn lanes into this development, okay. which is significant. Okay, that's my question. <clears throat> I have no comment. I, I think that's where the confusion was, as we thought originally that, again, I want to go back to that, that we thought the light was going to be <clears throat> at the North Lowe's Road. Mm -hmm. And yeah. any human being could see that would be a disaster. Right. Exactly. <laughs> but we're this is just further down. iterate <clears throat> where this is going to occur. Um, I have this. This is um, land that the, um, the applicant has purchased to make for a training vehicle. Mm -hmm. And this, they will then, this road will placed on this property and actually um, veer a little bit north so that they can get the appropriate um, lineup with the Home Depot's designated main intersection. Mm -hmm. Which is um, it's, it's a big effort by the applicant. Absolutely. All right, so all I need is a motion to accept application number 18. Dash zero one one three S P A A R. I'll make a motion to accept eighteen dash zero one one three as read. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries five zero. <laughs> On to the next. <clears throat> Application number eighteen dash zero zero nine three P V A R. Bradford. A variance from the village's code of ordinances at section 2349B1, general access at subparagraph B, in order to allow the use of tandem parking spaces for a multifamily residential development, where village code only allows tandem parking spaces to be counted as required parking spaces for single family residences. <clears throat> subparagraph B requires that each parking space shall be accessible without having to drive over or through any um, other parking spaces except for single family homes, you think driveways and single family home, wherein one space may be located behind another space, also known as tandem parking spaces, i.e. driveways. This variance, if approved, would allow 18 tandem parking spaces to count toward the required parking. If the variance is granted, the site will meet the village's parking requirements for the development of 717 parking spaces and, and will be providing a total of 735 parking spaces. Um, additionally, the applicant is requesting a variance from section 2351 1D to allow six parking spaces to be used exclusively by the U.S. Postal Service during certain times where village code requires that such spaces be available for residents and guests at all times. This is a new dynamic that we're experiencing with the Postal Service. And um, until we're able to maybe evaluate and amend our code to allow for such thing, this is the only mechanism in order to accomplish that. <clears throat> village Code Section 2353A1 allows that the Village Council grant ver or this board to ground variances of the parking code when special conditions and circumstances exist which are not not applicable to other lands. Special conditions do not result from the actions of the applicant. Will not confer on the applicant special privileges that are denied to other lands. <clears throat> Literal interpretation of the code would deprive the applicant the rights enjoyed by other lands. 
minimum variance that will make possible the reasonable use of the property um, and be harmony with the general intent and purpose of the zoning code. Um, the applicant contends, although the code does not allow the use of tandem spaces, um, there is no way to prevent the use of them by future residents when garage apartments are developed, requiring additional parking spaces with no consideration given to the tandem parking spaces will result in excess parking of the project of the proposed project. The applicant feels the code was developed at a time when garages were not widely constructed with apartments. The proposed variance will reduce the environmental impacts and provide <clears throat> more flexible design options and open space. So these tandem parking spaces, where they occur is it's a, it's similar to a single family residence. You got a driveway that goes to a garage. So what they're asking for in that driveway is, let's call it a driveway, um, is 10 by 20, which meets the code requirement for our code, but our code doesn't allow you, other than if you're a residential home, to pass through that parking space or the driveway to get to your required parking space in the garage. So what they're asking for is to, to allow for that parking space that they're providing within that driveway to count towards the required parking spaces. And they're contending that the person that's using the garage will also be designated that space in front of the garage. Can't count because it's a tandem parking space because this is not a single family residential development. True. <clears throat> the applicant has proposed that in the event the parking does not become an, that the, if the parking does become an issue that they have committed to adding parking spaces in the area highlighted here on this slide. Um, they would rather dedicate this area to recreation space for their residents. Um, staff is not in support of this variance. Again, we have to have a strict, we have to have a very straightforward view of evaluation of these applications and staff believes we are not supporting this app application. No special conditions or circumstances exist, which are not applicable to other lands. The condition is a result from actions of the applicant. We'll confer on the applicant special privileges, privileges that are denied to other lands. The literal interpretation of the code does not deprive the applicant the rights enjoyed by other lands in the same zoning district and is not the minimum variance necessary to allow use, reasonable use of the property. Again, staff is recommending denial of this application. However, there has been sim similar variances approved under sil similar circumstance in which the variance to tandem parking has occurred. And the most recent was, again, phase one north, uh, which is the one that is currently under construction, and the enclave. So this, this has happened and been approved in the past. Um, and with that being said, I'll turn the floor back, back over to you, Chairman. Thank you. Okay, do we have any comments again? Are you up again? <laughs> I'm short, what can I say? <laughs> Alessandria Palmer again with Urban Design Field Day Studios. Okay. Pod three parking variance. You all are familiar by now where pod three is located, just directly to the west at Lowe's. So as Bradford mentioned, um, we are required to have 717 parking spaces on the site based on the bedrooms counted within all the apartment units throughout the community. We are proposing 735, however, as he also mentioned, only 699 of those are standard code accepted spaces. 30 of those spaces are tandem, which I'll go into a little bit more detail um, to show you some visuals of what Bradford was talking about. And then six are, of course, the postal service spaces as well, which is, as he mentioned, a new issue we're running into. So that takes us to the 18 space variance. So, up on your screen, you'll see the driveways that Bradford was referring to. These are located outside of all of the garages that we're proposing. And I'm sorry that you can't see the site plan first because I know that wouldn't be helpful, but <laughs> we'll talk about that next. Um, so these driveways are all 10 by 20 parking spaces, which meet the typical the, the requirements of, a, of dimensional requirements of a parking space. However, they are outside of these parking garages, and so therefore we can't necessarily count them as the code states. However, it's important to note that these spaces are behind the garages that are associated with 
the apartment buildings and the townhome uni buildings. So in other words, we have like freestanding parking garages that are just a building with a row of parking spaces, uh, parking garages. These are not spaces behind those garages. These are adjacent to the buildings in which people are going to be living in. So they act identical to the way a single family home would have a driveway outside of their parking garage. It's a it's an identical situation to that. So yes, we do commit that, uh, especially since it's an apartment complex in which it will be managed by the um, operating company of the applicant, they will mandate that these spaces are going to be used by whomever is leasing these particular garages. And I know that that's not something that the village necessarily can, can mandate, but it is something that we will operationally manage. So this is just, um, again, more visuals to let you understand how where these garages are and where these parking um, spaces will be. This is one of the apartment buildings, and again, a little bit before uh, the site plan proposal here, but it goes to show you where how the garages are actually underneath the apartments, just like they would be in a two-story single-family home, and then the, the driveway space is right outside of that driveway uh, parking garage. And again, the same thing with the townhomes. You have the uh, the garages on um, on the first level, and then the parking space is right outside of that. Also, as Bradford mentioned, sneak peek of the site plan, the alternate parking plan, which is required as part of this variance request, is proposed in one of our main rec areas. So if we were to find that these parking spaces were needed, we would actually pay in lieu additional recreation space uh, would be removed and we would provide the 18 spaces there in one of the play fields and that concludes the parking variance presentation any other comments from the public please hmm. i just have a question by the way i did not take the oath so if you want to administer that right now i i didn't expect to be making okay. that I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm covered. Okay, just okay. State, state your name, yeah. please. Yeah, my name is Carl Silverman, and I'm a resident at Greenway Village here in Royal Palm Beach. Um, <clears throat> I just want to make sure I understand this. A, a, an apartment or a townhouse, a rental unit, will have a garage underneath of it that will fit one car. And then outside of the garage, there will be one parking space. So those are considered two parking spaces. Is that, right. that correct? Okay. Now, if somebody needs to get the car from the garage and say they don't want to take the car that's out in the driveway on their trip, wherever they're going, how is there street parking they can back their car up onto while they're shifting their cars around? There is. There are other parking spaces that are um, available throughout the development which lend themselves to this transfer of one car out of the garage and the other car back into the driveway yeah but how far is that going to be from there because people aren't going to people aren't going to want to you know drive what, to the next block it, while they're shifting will, cars around they're going to be it will depend blocking, on which unit you're blocking the road it'll depend on which unit it's going to be doing the car shifting. Okay, but basically, there, basically there's no street more. parking area or even a standing area, a designated standing area for a car to back out, put the car there until they can get the car out of the garage and then shift around. Well, it depends on what your definition of an area where you can park your car while you go get the other car out of the garage. Well, <laughs> it, would, will, it be impeding the tra will it be impeding to... the traffic? Or will it be? And, and is, is this, are these roadways going to be public roadways? No, this is it's going all, to be a private development. All private development. So that the road that comes off of Southern going and then makes a 90 degree turn over to State Road 7, right? Okay. Off of. Yeah, the major, the major roads. I forget, Tuttle and Erica. Is that what it is? Tuttle and Erica. Uh, that's not through traffic for the public. Oh, yes. No, no. It is. No, 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 well, well, you were talking, you were first talking about the internal circulation drives within this development. Then you shifted to well, I'm another, to get an another idea. roadway whenever you right. said, are, right. these, are these going to be public or are these going to be private? Not knowing that you would switch to Lowe's or Erica Boulevard. Those internal drives 
within pod three, yes, those will be private. private You'll okay. have to go through a security gate in order to access those roadways. Okay. Lowe's Road, i.e. Eric Boulevard, will be a private road maintained by the Property Owners Association that allows for free flow of traffic from the public. Okay, so you can, in other words, if I'm coming east on Southern and I want to avoid the uh, major intersection at State Road 7, but I want to go south on State Road 7, okay, I can make a right turn, a tuttle, That's correct. go through the whole development basically and come out on State Road 7. That's correct. And then also if I'm coming up State Road 7, there'll be two left turn lanes. By the way, I'm also a school bus driver, so I'm up and down those roads all the time, right. okay? And I'm dealing with left turns across traffic all the time. And all of these signals, which often are malfunctioning sometimes. Uh, but anyway, uh, so that's gonna be a big deal. There are gonna be a lot of people that are gonna be going through this development that aren't even gonna be stopping in the development, right? Uh. Well, we don't know that. And what, That's and, speculation. Well, if you see the left turners going up north, if you see the left turners, particularly in the afternoon, going north on State Road 7 to go west on Southern, and they're going to go through your development, it's going to be a big deal. But anyway, getting back to this, this uh, a parking situation. So the area adjacent to these units is private roadway area right. within the gated, gated area. Right. Okay. But still... The circulation, if you're going to, if people are going to be backing their cars out, they're not going to go down the block to switch cars. They're going to block, they're going to essentially possibly be blocking other users' traffic there. You will, just like a lot of other roads within the village, um, when I have a situation where my neighbor across the street, they have to jockey cars as a neighbor. We go around whenever they park their car adjacent to, you know, their front yard. Now, that's not to but say... But it's wide enough. It's wide. I just want to make sure it's, it's wide enough. I don't know how wide these okay. roads let me, are. Let me, let me finish this thought. Go ahead. And then you can... You don't have a schematic or anything that you can point to? Oh, I, I do have a site plan that's coming up. Okay. okay. So what, what would occur would be is, is now you're making the assumption that these people are going to pull their car out and they're going to park and they're going to block a parking lot or block the roadway, these, or block the internal drive. These inter internal drives are 25 feet wide, right? So you will be, you will be able to get around, get around them. Okay. any of these cars at any time, unless you have two that are parked, which you would think that these people would have enough sense not to park their car across from somebody else. But not, not, to, not to mention that these people will also potentially park their car that's adjacent to just an open area right and not some block somebody's parking lot so that's that's my explanation of that and there will be there are going to be schematics or, or aerials posted on the website that we can look at the look next at. next item on the agenda is the site plan yes thank you Any further discussion Okay, yes. I'd like to ask a question. These are tandem driveways, right? Now, you're going to have two floors of apartments above this? How is it going to work? Is I'm in apartment one, is the garage my parking spot? And if I'm in apartment two, will my spot be? How, how, is, how is the assignment of the spots going to work? Maybe that's what I'm trying to get at. Because how am I going to stop somebody else from parking in that spot out there? Sorry, I had to consult our uh, apartment guys. So from my understanding, the, for instance, in, in one of the multi-level apartment buildings, there's four garages. Well, there's 22 units. So it's on a first come first serve basis. If somebody in that building would like to lease one of those garages, it doesn't matter where they live in the building, they can lease one of the four garages if they are available. So if I lease a garage and I'm parked there, can somebody just come and park behind me? No, that's what we were saying before, is that those spaces behind the garages will be for that leasee of that garage. For the, okay, okay, good. Yeah. Thank you for yep. the clarification. Mm -hmm. And they yeah. do that in all their properties, and they have never had an, 
an issue with. I just want to clarify that. Right. So whoever has the garage can can do the tandem parking, as it would be called. They essentially get two reserved <clears throat> parking spaces. Right. Is what they get. Right. Right. And each garage is available for any unit. And and also just pulling out of that driveway would be like me pulling out of my development of my housing where I live parking on the street and my husband moving the other car out or whatever and as the neighbors go around or whatever or slow down to let me finish what I'm doing so that would not impede my development in my driveway right there then okay That's correct correct all right thank you question good good I'm fine Tanya I have a question for you if you can step up there please um, can you run that what I was thinking is you, the applicant, and, and uh, maybe Brian, would rather dedicate this as open space. In other words, what you save on the parking side, I heard you say that. Is that true, or am I on the right track? Right, so in other words, if we were, there's space on the property, technically, yeah. to yeah. add these 18 spaces, but A, we believe that the 18 tandem spaces are gonna be used, mm -hmm. and so therefore, we would prefer not to bite into our open space area that we're proposing as rec area mm -hmm. for those 18 spaces. Okay. So I thought that was a good idea, but I want to make sure in Bradford, maybe you can help me on this. Uh, the staff has denied this basically, right? This bottom line. Right. Okay. And it's because our current code is, does, is not set up for it. A single family. And we're looking at, something other than single family right we let me get back to some reason because we're talking apples to apples we again um i'm going to go back to yeah what i had stated. I just want to make, get what, be what, clear in my mind whatever we're evaluating variances or things or requests that go against our code right we have specific criteria mm -hmm. that we have to evaluate these variances um are there special are there special circumstances that aren't um, the result of actions of the applicant? Well, they develop this piece of property. They can reduce the number of units. They can have the number of parking spaces without use of the tandem parking spaces. Right. So we have to go with the strict um, interp not interpretation, but the strict guidelines of our code. Now what. What then you guys have and ladies have the ability to do is to use other factors and so does our council of have we determined that with these tandem parking spaces in multifamily developments um, in the past, they aren't a problem. We've contemplated that in the past and we've approved these things. Um, now, then you can say, well, you know what? The industry really is going towards a garage with a tandem parking space, much like you would find in a single family residential exactly. neighborhood. But now this is a new product. I didn't, I, whenever I lived in apartments, a garage would have been nice, but that was not part of the market whenever I was renting. <laughs> so this may be a new product. <clears throat> Our code just hasn't contemplated it or doesn't contemplate it. <laughs> Those are things that you can take into consideration when you make your decisions. I just can't based on my recommendations. Okay, well, let me expand on that question then. <clears throat> you, you cited other examples where it was successful. Right. Can you point them out to me, please? Right, do you know where the Enclave is? Mm -hmm. Back behind um, Rooms to Go? Mm -hmm. They had a similar condition where there was gonna be an evaluation period where they would then, they would also have to provide that additional parking, those additional parking spaces right. in an area that wasn't originally contemplated for parking spaces, but if there became a problem, mm -hmm. then they would dedicate that area and again, it was recreation area. That right, we recreation. To provide to the to the residents. Mm -hmm. We have not in the, that evaluation period has ended because it just can't go on for perpetuity. Right. <clears throat> that evaluation period has ended, and there has been no problem in that development. Well, maybe Tanya, if you can make the case, then is what I'm searching for, because I, I get I get the concept, the open spaces and the rec area, and all, and I don't see why. This should be denied. That's I'm not. I'm missing it here. Maybe you can make the case to me. Yeah. Feel free to approve it. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, I think the bottom line is that staff. 
cannot take the position that this is something that the market is moving towards. Exactly. It's so market they driven. Have to, they have to go by the code, as Bradford has stated. Okay. Um, however, obviously, your board has recommended approval of this in the past. The village council has approved it for at least two projects that we know of within the right. village. And, um, you know, what we're seeing is we're trying to, I think there was some connotation earlier tonight about affordable housing in the village yeah. and that this is not going to be affordable housing. This is going to be market rate. We're trying to provide a very high quality product here mm -hmm. um, as an apartment rental complex. And part of that is this type of product. We need to be able to offer these type of leases, mm -hmm. these amenities such as a private garage. And unfortunately, when you start doing those types of options and, and additional amenities, you lose space and right, exactly. you, you can, you know, it's great to be able to offer that as part of your package mm -hmm. as these standalone garages and these garages that are within the apartment buildings, but it takes away land area to do other things such as meet the parking code technically and things like that. So we are seeing, um, you know, as the applicant, we are seeing this particular market, there are people out there that want to be able to rent in a community that has these options and that has the, you know, these luxury, more luxury type amenities of having um, their own private garage. And that's what um, this is really about, is being able to offer that to the residents. Thank you. I can see the hardship. May I just state that what happens is the village does have to have specific guidelines and they have to follow those specific guidelines. But when it comes in front of us, and correct me if I'm not right, that it's then for us to say, well, we can make a variance from those specific guidelines to move forward, like we did when we do the enclave, you know, you which can, is our decision to make, to approve this or deny. You can use other factors to make your decisions. And I do like the fact that it's giving us more green space. We need all the trees and grass that we can get any place. Right. Thank you. Further discussion? Who would someone like to make a motion to approve or disapprove it? I'll make a motion to approve 18 <clears throat> 0093 as read. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Me. Okay. So the motion passed four to one? Yes. Four to one. And I just want to go on the record that I've seen this type of thing happen in other developments, and it creates a mess with street parking until the HOA finally has to step in and do something about it. So I think that weighs heavily with staff, too. But on to the next item. Application number 18-0092-SP-AAR. Is there anything, uh, Bradford, you want to bring up? I know we... Sure. We, we've already approved the first item on the local area planning. Right. Um, yeah, let me uh, maybe just walk you through the site plan and some of the site plan amen amenities um, so that you can use that as you make your decision. <clears throat> the applicant is seeking a site plan architectural approval for proposed multifamily residential development on a 23.952 acre parcel of land. The site is situated within the multifamily residential zoning district. The site currently has several single family homes on large tracks. The applicant um, is um, <laughs> going to proposing to develop this property at a gross density of 13.28 um, units per acre for a total of 318 units. The 318 units will be divided between 13 buildings. The proposed site plan has several, has seven building types with unit counts ranging from four units to 36 units per building. The apartments in this development range from one bedroom and one bathroom to three bedrooms and two and a half bathrooms. The site will also contain a 1.94 acre lake for on-site retention. In addition, the site plan provides 12.21 acres of green and open space. Access to the site will be from Southern Boulevard via a new bridge over the C-51 Canal and a future access to State Road 7 south of Lowe's. <clears throat> Pursuant to 2675G2, a village code requirements for recreation space are 10 acres of recreation space per 1,000 residents. Each dwelling unit generates two and a half residents per village code. Um, and based on the proposed 318 multifamily units, 7.9 acres of recreation space is required. 
Section 2675H <clears throat> allows for a credit of private open space where 50% of the required recreation area can be provided as private open space to the residents of the subdivision. The applicant is proposing to provide a total of 2.7 acres of private recreation on site for a total of 30% of the project's recreation obligation. The private recreation areas proposed will include a pool, clubhouse, fitness center, vegetable garden, outdoor dining areas, play field, picnic area, tot lot, dog park, and volleyball courts, as well as numerous walking trails. The applicant is also offering to pay a fee in lieu of dedication of land to the village for 1.2 acres for 16% um, of the project's recreation obligation. The village code section 26754H3 allows for a fee in lieu of de uh, dedication of land, and the applicant is proposing a $320,000 per acre fee in lieu of payment for the 1.2 acre recreation obligation for a total of $409,600. The applicant will also be dedicating 3.98 acres of land totaling 50% of the remaining recreation obligation. This 3.9 acres will be part of pot eight, which was intended to be the receiving area for the recreation obligations for pots two, three, four, and a total of approximately 10 acres. In reviewing this petition, village staff considered conformity with the Village of Royal Palm Beach Zoning Code pertaining to multifamily, res multifamily residential RM14 zoning district. Specifically, the proposed pod project meets the requirements for the multi-residential um, zoning district as it relates to parcel size, parcel width, setbacks, pervious area, landscape areas, parking requirements other than the tandem parking and the um, restriction for the post office times um, and maximum building height. The applicant is also requesting architectural approval for the apartment buildings. Um, the applicant has indicated that the project um, signage will be part of a future architectural approval request. Um, the applicant has submitted a landscape plan and color renderings of these buildings. Um, and this here is a rendering of the buildings. sideways on it there we go and here is an illustration of the um, clubhouse which I've seen a lot of clubhouses in my time <laughs> this is a doozy um, overall the proposed site is in conformance with the village's requirements for the multifamily residential zoning district staff is recommending approval of application 1892 and resolution 1916 this recommendation is contingent upon the um, approval of the developer's agreement and the, um, also the uh, parking variance, and which was approved on the prior um, agenda items. And I would also like to read this condition of approval, which I think is important, and so does our attorney, which you better read that into the record. Uh, <laughs> Um, this is a condition of approval which the applicant has agreed upon, which has got a lot of technical stuff in here, which outlines the process moving forward, which <clears throat> so that there is no assumptions on either parties, my other party. Um, no engineering permit application shall be accepted prior to the preliminary master plat approval by village council. No building permit application shall be accepted prior to the Lowe's Road site plan approval, master plan approval, and final master plat approval. Additionally, no certificate of occupancy shall be issued until the public park is deeded and accepted by the village of Royal Palm Beach unless a different time frame for the deed and acceptance is agreed to by the village and the construction agreement for required improvements. And no certificate of occupancy shall be issued until all infrastructure supporting the development is complete and accepted in accordance with Chapter 22 of Village Code, including but not limited to the completion of all of Lowe's Road, Low, yeah, all of Lowe's Road, from State Road 7 to Total Boulevard and Lus Road to the proposed public park. And with that being said, I'll turn the floor back over to you, Chairman. Thank you. That's a pretty good stipulation to have in there. Right. Any comments from the... Are they at least buying you dinner tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Is there just my muscle back there? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
last time, I promise, Alessandria Palmer, Urban Design Kill Day Studios. Pod three, we know where it is, I hope, by now. <laughs> okay, so um, we are proposing 318 units, as been discussed. That is going to be split up between 310 standard apartment units and eight townhome apartment units. So um, this is a, a site plan illustration we put together for you just to kind of give you um, an easier look at what is being proposed. As you can see, we are proposing 13 buildings with seven building types. Those buildings will have one to three bedroom units within them. The townhome buildings, mm -hmm. which are on the uh, facing the commons area, I don't know if you can see my mouse over here, but uh, the two townhome buildings are facing this common area right north of the clubhouse. Those buildings will have four units each. Uh, they will be uh, three bedroom units. So there'll be a total of eight townhome units. The apartment buildings, going back to those, um, will have 22 to 36 units depending on the building type. And I'll go through that in a moment. And then also, as Bradford had mentioned, uh, we will have a total of 12, just over 12 acres of open space, including the nearly two acre lake, which is, which is the central feature um, in between many of those apartment buildings. So they'll have a nice view looking out their, their windows on that side. As far as access for the site, the main entry will be on the south boundary. You will enter through a roundabout, and then you will be able to go um, from Erica Boulevard to either the east or west from the, the roundabout through gates. This will be a, a gated community. You will also exit through that same point of access. Once you get to Erica Boulevard, you'll be able to go west to exit um, ultimately onto Southern Boulevard through Tuttle Boulevard, or you will go east to exit onto State Road 7. There will be, if you can see at the top of your screen, an emergency access on the north boundary. That is for emergency vehicles only. It will have a Knox box and will be required to be provided to fire and uh, sheriff entities. As you all know, we have our traffic approval that was required as part of the land use application that you saw earlier in the year, or last year, I should say. Um, also, as Bradford had mentioned, we are providing 2.7 acres of on-site recreation. The remaining 1.28 that would have been required either off-site or on-site is going to be paid in lieu, which I won't go over those numbers again. Um, and then the 3.9 acres will be located in pot eight. As far as the on-site rec, I know Bradford went through a lot of this, but just to kind of give you some a more of a visual, all the areas with the yellow dotted lines are our rec areas. So. It covers a lot of the site, as you can see here. We have the dog park, the vegetable garden, the clubhouse, the pool area, the common area north of the pool. Uh, we also have these play fields that are sort of multi-purpose. We have the volleyball, the tot lot, and then we have this wonderful waterfront area that residents will be able to actually walk and utilize around the lake. And um, I believe there's also going to be fitness facilities on that walkway that people can stop and do exercises or whatever um, on their way around the lake. Bradford stole my thunder on the clubhouse, <laughs> but this is, um, it's, it's quite beautiful. It was designed by Mark Wiener Architects, the architect of record for the project. And uh, it will be a two-story clubhouse. I believe um, the total square footage is just over 7,000 square feet. The first floor will comprise of a business center, a gaming center, a cyber cafe, and of course the leasing component and offices. And then the second floor is going to be where all their fitness and aerobics studio is. There's also going to be a kid's playroom for parents <clears throat> who want to come and work out and leave their kids in, uh, in a safe place. Moving on to the um, architecture of the for the for the apartment buildings, this is the three-story building. They will be at a maximum of 32 square feet per the code. Each building, as I mentioned, will hold um, from 22 to 36 units, depending on the unit on the, the building type. Um, the uh, smaller buildings will have those four garages on the first level that residents can choose to lease in addition to their unit. 
there will be 128 one-bedroom units ranging from about 800 square feet, well, 795 to 816 square feet. And then there will be 152 two-bedroom units at 1,093 square feet and 30 three-bedroom units at 1,355 square feet. The townhome units, as I had mentioned, will have the four units each. They will be three bedrooms, as I had also mentioned, but they will be around 1,600 square feet, so quite larger since it's a um, two-level unit. And of course, each of those units will have a parking garage and the tandem space outside. That concludes my presentation. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Okay. <clears throat> Commissioner Barron? If we could ask if there's any comments from the public. Yeah, these, no, these guys aren't going to talk. <laughs> Um, no questions at the <coughs> present time. <laughs> no question for me. Yeah. Well, can I get a motion? I'll make a motion to approve application number 18-0092. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Carries 5-0. That concludes our business tonight. We don't have any other uh, board business, right? All right, well, then our next meeting is on Tuesday, June 25th, and this meeting is adjourned.